2022 proved to be a devastating year for Elon Musk, the former richest man on the planet. Musk lost close to $200 billion from his net worth, and as a result, he had to give up his title as the richest individual on the planet. As we enter 2023, this title is reserved for the French billionaire Bernard Arnault, who's made his money in the luxury goods department. As head of the LVMH conglomerate, Arnault is currently worth in the region of about $210 billion according to Forbes. We'll take a look at how he made his fortunes, and what to expect from him. Bernard Arnault was born on March 5, 1945, to Jean Arnault and Marie-Joseph Savinel. His father was the owner of a civil engineering firm by the name of Ferret Savinel, which becomes very relevant to Bernard's launch into the luxury world. After finishing his engineering education at the École Polytechnique, Bernard joined his father's business in 1971. By 1974, he had convinced his father to shift his focus on real estate, and eventually sold the industrial construction division of the firm. As Bernard took on the position of company president from 1978 to 1984, he turned the firm into a real estate and textile conglomerate, before eventually giving up real estate assets to Nexity. In 1984, Bernard Arnault found out that the French government was choosing someone to take over the Boussac saint frères empire. This retail and textile conglomerate also happened to own Christian Dior. Arnault won the bidding war for the takeover as the CEO of his own luxury brand Financiera Gache. He became one of the most ruthless CEOs in France, when he laid off 9,000 employees in two years. This earned him the nickname of, The Terminator. Even though he was widely criticized for this, Arnault turned the company's fortunes around. He sold all company assets except for Christian Dior and the Le Bon Marqué department store. This meant that by 1987, the company collected revenues close to $2 billion. They made a profit of $112 million too. Today, Bernard Arnault is best known for his ownership of the LVMH conglomerate. The foundations for LVMH were laid in 1987, alongside the CEOs of Moat Hennessy and Louis Vuitton. In July of 1988, Arnault teamed up with Guinness to form a holding for 24% of LVMH's shares. Rumors began floating that Arnault was trying to form a blocking minority, thereby breaking the premise of having no single major stakeholder. Arnault completed his blocking minority by spending $1.1 billion to purchase LVMH shares. His main motivation behind this was to oust Henry Rackemeyer, CEO of Louis Vuitton, from the company due to difference of opinions. By January 1989, Arnault had been named chairman of the executive chairman board. The takeover was complete. As he took on the leadership role, Arnault transformed the LVMH conglomerate into the most recognizable luxury group in the world. Arnault followed an ambitious plan involving acquisitions and amazing marketing strategies. In the first 11 years, LVMH reported profits which had grown by a factor of 5 over the years. Similarly, LVMH's market value had grown by a factor of 15 during the same time. LVMH had acquired some of the biggest names in fashion including Guerlain, Loewy, Marc Jacobs, Sephora, Thomas Pink, Emilio Pucci, Fendi and DKNY to name a few. Arnault knew that to reap unrivaled profits, he had to dominate the US market. A center was developed in New York to manage LVMH's American presence, under the supervision of Christian de Port Sampark. As a result, the LVMH Tower was opened up in 1999. That same year, Arnault got into his famous feud with Gucci. Arnault had set his eyes to try and acquire Gucci. Under the pretense of being unassertive stakeholder, Arnault ended up amassing 34.4% of company stake in Gucci. Gucci were not happy with what they called, a creepy takeover, and ended up giving all their employees company shares, to dilute Arnault's stake. The lawsuit dragged on until 2001, when LVMH were ordered to give up their stake in Gucci, but were paid $700 million in profit compensation. Over the years, Arnault has also diversified his investments, and purchased stake in a whole host of industries. Arnault is one of the earliest investors in Netflix, as well as having a 10% stake in Carrefour, which is France's largest retail supermarket chain. He's also entered the luxury yacht scene, with his ownership of Princess Yacht and Royal Van Lent. Bernard Arnault also has a 2% stake in Hermes. One of the distinguishing factors about Bernard Arnault has been the indifference to his wealth in the current economic crisis. His personal wealth dropped by $7.2 billion in 2022, which is a huge sum. However, in comparison to billionaires like Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg, who lost upwards of $70 billion each, Arnault's loss seems like pocket change. Experts believe this is because the demand for luxury high-end products has remained stable. This was reflected in the fact that LVMH sold 80 billion euros worth of product in 2022, exceeding 2021 by 23%. Similarly, profits from recurring operations also went up by 23% in 2022. Europe, US, and Japan were the strongest markets for LVMH, 
whereas the Chinese market suffered from rising COVID restrictions again. The Louis Vuitton brand was exceptionally successful, with single-year revenue crossing 20 billion euros for the first time ever. Dior Sauvage became the market leader in the perfume world. The LVMH group hired 39,000 employees last year, and operate in more than 500 locations. And with operating working capital of more than 10 billion euros, they have one of the best cash flows in the world. Bernard Arnault has cemented his place as the face of LVMH, as his position as the company's CEO is no longer subject to an age limit. Arnault is set to remain on the hot seat until the age of 80. One cannot ignore the fact that Bernard Arnault has placed his children in important positions within the conglomerate. His daughter Delphine is the partner of another French billionaire called Xavier Neal, and is the CEO of Christian Dior. Of his four sons, Frederick is the CEO of Tag Heuer, Antoine is the CEO of Dior's holding company, Alexander is the vice president at Tiffany's & Co., and Jean heads up marketing at LV Watches. The Arnault family, with their wealth and political connections, is one of the most powerful families in the entire world. Within France, they are no less than actual royalty. Bernard Arnault is a staunch supporter of Emmanuel Macron, and has pledged his resources towards media and campaign efforts for Macron's bid for presidency. He's also been a staunch supporter of taxing the rich, unlike most billionaires. However, Arnault was also once accused of requesting Belgian citizenship for tax evasion reasons. He withdrew this request and clarified that it was never for evading the French tax laws. Arnault has benefited greatly due to his stake in LVMH in the last two years. Since 2020, the LVMH share price has gone up 65%. This was despite the fact that revenues fell 17% during this time, and profits for LVMH were down by 28% in the pandemic. The share price appreciation has meant that Arnault's wealth has more than doubled during this time, and experts point this success to the demand of luxury goods growing greatly in the pandemic. In an uncertain time, many people have put their money in luxury goods as their value is only set to increase. It must be noted that during the pandemic, currency devalued immensely, meaning that luxury goods became a safe keep for many. Bernard Arnault differs greatly from tech billionaires, and can be compared to old-school money moguls like Warren Buffet, who Arnault claims is his biggest inspiration. Arnault, like Buffet, follows the long-term patient strategies to grow their wealth organically. Arnault waited almost a decade before formally taking over Bulgari, making sure to buy the brand in 2011 when they were struggling with finances. While his real estate portfolio is relatively small for a man of his wealth, it is surprisingly impressive. Arnault owns 25 wineries around the world, one of which is in Burgundy, which is almost 25 acres large that he purchased for 10 million euros. Arnault additionally owns Chateau saint remy de landis in Clairefontaine and a villa in Saint-Tropez. Moreover, Bernard Arnault owns five homes in Beverly Hills, California. This includes properties on the Truesdale Estates and Bird Streets. His Beverly Hills properties are worth around $130 million collectively. Arnault also has ownership of Lynn Park, which is about 30 kilometers north of London, where he's built a lavish 4,300-square-meter luxury villa. Capping off his real estate portfolio is a 133 acres island in the Bahamas that he bought for $35 million, called the Indigo. Having started the year on a good note, LVMH will propose giving dividends worth $12 per share in the next AGM. They have already paid an interim $5 per share back in December 2022, and will pay the rest in April, after the AGM. In an overview given by the company, 2022 followed the trend of rising revenue for the company, especially in the leather goods section, where the company has seen a 25% increase since 2021. Almost one in three of all leather and fashion products sold by LVMH are sold in Asia. Here, despite the COVID restrictions in China, the company has kept stable revenues coming in. In the luxury watches market, LVMH has seen a bigger chunk of their revenue come from the European market, and lesser so from the Asian market. In the selective retailing section, LVMH made most of their money from the American market. This is on the back of a historic year by Sephora, and fiscally profitable years for DFS, Starboard Cruises, and even Le Bon Marche. Arnaud has promoted decisions towards decentralizing the group's brands as a business strategy. As a result of these measures, brands under the LVMH umbrella such as Tiffany are still viewed as independent firms with their history. Despite his enormous wealth, Bernard Arnaud has maintained a relatively private life. He rarely makes a public appearance, and isn't publicly using social media. Unlike some brash billionaires, you won't find Bernard Arnault posting silly remarks on Twitter every now and then. He even went as far as selling his private jet to keep his movement a secret from being tracked and publicly revealed on Twitter. The aircraft was a Bombardier Global 7500. His close associates revealed that in an attempt to ensure his safety and privacy, Arnault was now using rented airplanes. Under Arnault's leadership, 
LVMH has grown to become the largest company by market capitalization in the Eurozone, with a record of $382 billion, of which he and his family own 42%. With the company set to be under his command till at least the age of 80, and his children being in important roles all over the brand, it is safe to say that Bernard Arnault has played the long game and kept control of the conglomerate within his own family lineage. While it is unlikely that Bernard Arnault retains his spot at the top for a very long time, due to the volatile nature of the economy, his dedication towards growing LVMH into a household name cannot be taken lightly. He might be overtaken by a tech millionaire like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos again, but Bernard Arnault is the living example of an old brand of acquisition and organic growth-based capitalism that has served him really well. With their stake in a diversified group of businesses, the Arnault family will always be among the richest and most influential groups in the world.